All right, welcome back. Uh, this is part two of the sketch modeling video series. So here I've got the original model. This is where I stopped last time. Uh, and from that point, I've gone ahead and started doing some more tweaks and some more refining of the model. Uh, and part of the reason for that was I was starting to see things on this that didn't feel like it was accurate to this. Um, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to hide this piece for right now. Let's go ahead and let's turn off all the whites. Let's just look at silhouette. So if you look at this, um, this particular one leans back just a little bit further. The shoulder is even higher. You can see here the shoulder is a little bit higher. It's straight across. This one matches up more to that artwork. The hat angle on this one is different than the hat angle here where it's a little bit closer together and kind of uh, scaled out. So if I was to come back in then and look at the uh, default lighting, and let's look at this relative to the, uh, the image back here. Again, you kind of have to look at it, kind of scoot it over just a little bit. We're going to try to match that angle up. You can see here the angle of the hat doesn't match up here. This needs to be angled. This needs to be kicked up just a little bit and then down. Um, I was looking at things like the arm. The arm was sitting too low. It needs to be up higher. So now through the magic of editing, let's jump forward in time. Um, so now what we're looking at is the completed model or the nearly completed model. And you can start to see some of the extra details I've been able to layer in. Um, what I found throughout this process, being the first time I've gone through and done it, is that you can get away with just about anything uh, using this and kind of smashing stuff together and geometry that's not pleasing to the eye at all, that's really being pulled and stretched, ends up looking really good. Um, one of the things I also struggled with was looking at stuff like this and seeing all these details and thinking, wow, her face looks terrible. But what I want to show you here in a few minutes is once you start to apply the shaders uh, in certain ways, all of that goes away and all of the true character starts to kind of emerge from this kind of mess of stick on pieces. So let's look at the head first, because um, I really struggled with this initially, again, trying to make it really nice and clean. Um, eventually I gave up on all that and just started jamming stuff in wherever it needed to go to get the profiles to look right. So I've actually gone through and took my initial jaw shape and I basically changed it just a little bit kind of cheated it even more to the side and I took this center section here and extruded it in on itself. Uh, and when I did that, that allows me to create this little tiny mouth cavity. So if I look at the general shapes that I'm using to kind of make up this mouth area, I have these two kind of muzzle shapes that are coming off like this that have an interior that was scooted up. And again, these are just using really crude bits of geometry uh, that are shaped. So that I took tons and tons or I got tons and tons of mileage out of using those quad balls that I had off to the side. So all of this is made from like half of a quad ball, half of a quad ball kind of pulling things down. Um, almost looks like a little beak stuck on this piece right now. Um, but if I go back to this, and then we can start to layer in things like the main nose uh, with this. So if you start to take a look, I'm building out my generic shape. So I've got kind of my cheek coming forward, my nose is sitting forward, now I've got the bridge of the nose coming up. And again, just blobby forms that I'm trying to make these out of. Then I started to layer up things like the brow ridges, and this gives a lot of form uh, to the face. So I also layered on, oops, this little cheek piece down here. Selecting this is not very fun. But just through that, you can start to see the forms of the face coming through. Now, you would probably never carry this down like this in a real model, but again, it helped to kind of solidify my, pro my uh, profiles based on the image that I was looking at, so I could get away with it here. The eyes also proved really challenging on this particular character, and the reason for that is because they're triangular, um, which you'd have to use a lot of deformers and a lot of rig kind of magic to get if this was an animated character. Um, but through this process, what I ended up using and what found worked best was this kind of tri-clamshell approach, where I'm using three clamshell shapes wrapped around the eye like this to get that shape. And I've also distorted the eye quite a bit. I had everything in a lattice, and I kind of squished it and moved it basically trying to flatten out the front of the eye um, because perfectly round eye shapes weren't working for this overall character design. It became too hard uh, to work with. The eye would extend too far back because of the roundness, so I had to end up flattening things out. Um, the brows, again, they're just stick-on pieces that are made from a quad ball that I started pulling out and adding some divisions to it to kind of shape those brows. Um, same with the ears. Um, I took this approach with the ear where it's basically just these three shapes. Same approach I took for the mouth. Took a quad ball, grabbed the center of it, pushed it back in, kind of maybe extruded it once. Gives me this kind of sloped interior surface. And then I've had just layered up this exterior piece on top and the little kind of center ear piece here. It all looks like garbage until it's smooth and it kind of sits on top of each other really nice and neat. Um, another reason why I did this 
was because in looking at my model, I was starting to think about how I'm going to texture this. This has like a gradient inside of it to really pull the shape forward. And I didn't want to model some of that stuff. I was going to rely on some texture mapping to do it. Um, so this became one of the best solutions that I could come up with. The hat is just a really simple cylinder. This is another simple cylinder made from the same thing, kind of pulled up and shaped. And then all of the hair is just basically quad balls that have been scaled and shaped just a little bit. Um, I did run into an issue where I basically had to cut off the top of the head to fit inside the hat. So if you look at the geometry for all of this, if I come up and select like this upper head piece, you can see everything is kind of cut right where it hits this hat and intersects because it's cheated very heavily on this drawing. Her head would actually come back up here um, the design cheats all of this stuff. Same with the hair pieces. What I ended up doing was flattening off the tops of some of these by pulling them down on top of each other like this so that when it would intersect the hat, uh, you wouldn't see it. And just kind of building up those volumes. And one of the other things I had to be cautious of here was uh, looking at the image, making sure that this profile of the hair is matched by my own profile. Um, so one of the things that I found that was actually really useful was I went through and was working only in perspective for this entire thing, but I went through and I selected the camera and I tried to match the camera up and I set a keyframe on that. Uh, so I basically this was my keyframe camera that I could go back through and I could start to look at some of this stuff and then make my changes and then go back to it and make changes and go back to it and make changes. And the reason for I did that was because now I could come in here and I could grab something and frame up, I can move around, do all my modeling, and then come down here and just scrub in the timeline. Because I have that single keyframe set here, it always pops me back so I can see the silhouette. Um, so again, if I was to come and turn off the, uh, the lights, I'd start looking at things like this and looking at things like this and the sleeves and everything just to make sure it was still correct. So that was another little trick that I ended up using. Um, for things like the, uh, the belt, you know, building that off the torso, that should be pretty straightforward. Um, this piece right here, the belt buckle, I just made out of a, of a plane that I kind of shaped up, extruded in, deleted out the interfaces. Um, but I'm not going to subdivide this or smooth it. I'm going to leave it as a rigid piece of geometry simply because it's so rigid looking on here. It worked out pretty well. I still added some bends to it that you can see. Um, but again, kind of getting away with murder here in terms of, of the things that I can use for this approach. The knife uh, is the same kind of thing. It looks kind of detailed, but if you start to break it apart, what I really did was create this piece first, again, out of a quad ball. I just scaled down the bottom a ton and then started adding some divisions and kind of pulling those out. And then I sunk in this top section. So when it smooths, it kind of gets this little lip on the top. Looks something like this. Then all of this stuff was really easy to make because once I have this piece right here, for instance, what I could do is come in and I could make a duplicate of it if I wanted to. So I just made a duplicate of it. Um, I can select this one. I can come in. I can use insert edge loop. Oops. Let's use insert edge loop and I would drop something like this. Then I would just come in and select all these faces around here. And I would just extract them off. So I'm using the extract tool. And then I would come in and get rid of all the rest of this stuff. And now all of a sudden, I've got this little piece that fits really nicely around. And that's how I did all the banding stuff. So I'd extrude that. I want to get rid of it for now. But I would extrude that in, get some thickness to it, basically making a ring or a hoop out of it. And then I would just duplicate it and I would move them around. Uh, same with these things. I just took a, uh, a cube and started bending it around a little bit and kind of adding some and extruding it kind of up and around to make these little hoops. Um, so all that stuff is separate pieces uh, put together. And then you inlay it like this and it starts to feel kind of like that sketch. So I kept going back to this and looking at, let's see if I can zoom in here on this image a little bit better. You know, these are a little bit thinner and they kind of intersect here and a little bit bigger. There's a little bit of space there and kind of overlaps a little bit. So trying to mimic some of the feel of that drawing and trying to get it through in here. Same with all this stuff up here. Exact same approach is used for everything um, where basically I took the handle and I cut it and I grabbed those faces, duplicated them, extruded them out just a little bit to get these thick rings and just kind of setting them on top. Um, so really simple geometry. Same with the leg uh, band that I've got here. I started with the leg shape. And what I did in this particular case is if I duplicate this, this piece is attached to it for some reason. Uh, I'm going to separate these and get rid of this parented. So I would just take something like this. And in this case, because those cuts are, are fairly straight on, they're kind of cheated to camera, I just used my, my, my uh, multi-cut tool, kind of cut down where I wanted. 
And again, grabbed all those faces, extract them off from everything else. And now all of a sudden I've got this leg band that I could take and if I do modify center pivot, I can scale it out just a tiny little bit and then take it and extrude it in on itself. And now all of a sudden I've got this band. Now for some of these pieces, you know, I might want a little bit of thickness or something on this. Looks like I missed a face back there. So in a couple cases, I did come in and add some additional edge loops like so. Um, let me undo that last one like this, just to give me a little bit of an edge or a little bit of a corner. Um, so again, it's not really modeling it out entirely, but it gives me just that little bit of finish here. So I'm going to delete all of this and let's go through and pull up the uh, model again. Oops, looks like I undid the, uh, the leg. That's because I deleted it. I didn't want this piece. Let's go to display, show all, and we're back at it. So that was the process. Um, up here, creating the bandana, I already kind of had some of those shapes. I just created some little stick-on pieces that kind of wrap in there. Again, trying to mimic these little bits that I saw in there. Um, for the mouth and the lips, they're just tubes. And again, I was just kind of laying, insetting those on top of these kind of muzzle bits that I made. Her teeth, same way. Started with a, uh, a box, kind of moved it around, moved some of the points, gave it some thickness and kind of smoothed it. And you can see I kind of inset those as teeth. So everything is just separate. Everything is just layered in. Um, and I, the nice thing about this too is I can grab the interior of like this mouth right now. And if I was to grab this, oops, let's do this. If I grab this face and this face, I could texture those to be red. Uh, and notice I wouldn't see it on the outside. So I'm just grabbing individual faces on certain pieces of geometry and texturing them with different shaders. Um, so that's the process. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think what else I really did on here. Eventually I ended up separating these boots out. So I duplicated this and I ripped out this piece and I ripped out this piece. I extended each one the opposite way, just a little tiny bit, so there's a little bit of a seam there. Um, but this is what was the model uh, that I ended up going through and starting my texture process on. The last thing I was going to say in terms of the chain, um, I have an example of the chain kind of sitting over here. I just created a torus and then I went through and kind of stripped it down to about eight sides around and about six sides across, looped all those things up like so, and I made a couple pieces like this. Uh, and then what I could do is again using bend deformers and things like that, I could take these large sections of chain and then I would go through and add a bend deformer to it. And I would just kind of get this about right. And let's just go up into modifi modify. Let's go to center uh, transformation tools. And let's go to the uh, show manipulator tool. And again, I can start doing things like this to bend that entire chain. Um, once I did that, I wanted to give some of these things. Let's select everything here. Let's delete the history just to show you. Um, and then what I would do is come through and grab everything. And then let's just group it. And that takes everything and takes it off of the parent. They were all kind of parented up. So I might grab a few of these and I would start to scale them up just a little bit. And maybe I grab a couple other ones and I scale them down and scale them out just a little bit. But I would start to modify them. Uh, even on some of them, I would go in and maybe grab a couple of the edges and kind of pull them up a little bit just so they're not perfect. Because I was looking at the uh, chain drawing that I, or the drawing of the chain and it was the same kind of thing where again, they're all drawn uniquely on there. So they're all a little bit different. Um, but that's how I went through and got some of these wobbles and things and they're very subtle But you can see some of them are much thinner than others um, But it is going to start to show up a little bit better when we light all of this. So uh, One last thing I'll talk about are the feet So what I did here was just create another uh, sphere or another quad ball I should say and kind of scaled it out shaped it. This is basically just a box that's been smoothed once uh, That I shaped up a little bit. I knifed the bottom ever so slightly there so that it'll keep that kind of flat heel uh, positioning those where the back foot because it has a slightly different shape here I create an additional piece and then these other two pieces that kind of sit on it so um, anyways that is the uh, the model for the most part um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can really talk about here except for you know we talked about the silhouette of the hair just a little bit if I grab some of these guys and I hide them what I really did was form this entire thing using really big volumes underneath so I'd add really big volumes first, and then I would add all these little bits on top of it. So I found the form using big shapes, and I would add little shapes on top to give it some, uh, some dimension. So let's talk a little bit about texturing this, and how do you go about texturing something like this? Well, the goal, again, is not to UV unwrap everything and not to paint amazing textures, but 
Um, it took me a little bit of playing to kind of figure out a, a method to how this might work. Um, so I want to show you an example of something uh, that I found that I thought was really interesting. So first thing, when we're dealing with our shaders, you need to know a little bit about shaders inside of Maya. And I'm not using Arnold shaders or anything like that. I'm just using base Maya shaders for this. I'm going to go in right now, and I've got the skin uh, shader. It's called Skin Tone, mapped onto everything that, that represents her skin. If I go in and play with just some of these attributes, you can start to see some of these results really quick. If I increase the ambient color, what the ambient color does is basically brighten, and it kind of takes out some of the uh, the uh, area uh, lights and things like that, and kind of it's self almost self lit. It's not incandescence, but it's basically taking up the ambience across everything. The diffuse is giving me all these little shadows. If I start to take that down, you can start to see my shapes flattening out. And just by doing that, and you back off just a little bit, notice what starts to happen. It starts to feel more like this painted effect. All those individual shapes go away, and now what I'm seeing are the base, the larger shapes uh, kind of showing up. So that was the first step, kind of playing with those two settings. So taking the, taking the uh, ambience up and taking the diffuse down. Um, now, this got me part of the way there. Um, the next thing I wanted to do was start to experiment maybe just a little bit with lights. So what I did was I went in and created a spotlight. So I'm just going to create a spotlight inside of Maya. And if you've already gone through and you go to Transformation Tools and you go to Show Manipulator Tool, if you click on your light and you click on that little Show Manipulator Tool, which I already clicked on, so the little icons over here, this makes it really easy to start to set up some lights in your scene. So I could do something like this. And she's kind of lit from down low, and I want to make sure that Oops, you can see I'm way off here. So let's just kind of get this on her torso. I'm going to pull this forward. Again, just using really, really simple stuff here. Nothing complex at all. So let's just back this thing off. And let's say that's what I wanted. Uh, the light in this is obviously has this kind of yellow amber tone to it. So I'm going to go in and just kind of make something that is the equivalent of that. Maybe something like this. Again, I'm not really too worried about it for right now. Now, Viewport 2.0 is a default uh, viewport in Maya at this point. It, it wasn't up until you know a number of years ago, but now it is. Um, so what I can do is I can hit 6 is going to display textures. Now, I haven't really textured anything on this yet, um, but if I hit the 7 key, it starts to show me my lights. Now, the other cool thing about taking the ambience up on this is you can see it's almost self-lit in some ways. It, it's really kind of popping. Um, but the problem with that is it's not getting any of the information from the light. So if I go back into my, uh, let's just select this, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to material attributes because it has that shader on it. If I start to take the ambient color down and I take the diffuse back up, notice now it's starting to get some of that light. Take this all the way up to like eight. Um, now it's being lit by the light only. So what I started doing was kind of getting just a little bit of this. I would take the diffuse down, so just a little bit of that light was starting to kind of creep in, maybe something like this. And on some of these sections, I wanted it more than others. Uh, so what ended up happening was I started breaking up all the individual skin parts. So like the head, um, the face structure was one shader. This ear was kind of actually two shaders. This ended up being two shaders. Um, and then I would do the upper arm as one shader, the lower arm as one shader. So everything started being broken up individually because I had more control. Um, and I want to show you why I had more control. All right, so first, let's look at this over here. Um, so I'm going to take the light off for a second by hitting the six key. You can see here that she's got strong highlights on the top of her arm. And down here I have the shadowing, and this is kind of the base skin tone. Same thing here, I've got kind of this base skin tone, some shadowing, and I ended up not getting much of this shadow just because it was proving to be way complex and I was running out of time. But her face is really lit to the side, so is this arm. So one of the approaches that I decided I was going to use was a split between some things were going to be lit by this lighting, but I wasn't going to be able to get the shadows that I wanted. Um, even if I come into this light for right now, and what I ended up using was just some really simple depth map shadows. And I cranked this up to 4096. And then the filter size kind of softens these shadows out just a little bit. So if I don't have those on, I don't get any kind of shadowing on my objects. And it does make a difference when these things are on the ground uh, kind of showing. So I did end up putting some shadows onto my light. Uh, but let's go back into here for a moment. So the face right now, 
I'm starting to see all of this kind of nastiness showing through and it doesn't it just doesn't look clean it doesn't look as nice as I would like so let's go back into this for a moment and again I'm gonna take the ambience on we're only gonna deal with the face right now uh, and I'm gonna take the diffuse down to almost nothing so now it's kind of flattened out the little bit of shadowing that you do see is a result of the occlusion so if I turned occlusion off now you can't even see anything uh, it's almost like a tune shader, right? Which is kind of cool, and you might be able to use that for depending on the look of your piece. But I'm going to leave it on for right now so we can see it. What I'm going to do is this. Um, I'm going to grab all these facial facial uh, pieces. Actually, let's just work with the skin that we already have. And then I'll make new materials for these other arm pieces. So what I'm going to do is apply a gradient across her face here. And you're going to see how I do this with using a ramp. So I'm going to go through... And on this material, I'm going to go down here to where it says, so I'm inside of Maya, and by default, it's got these shaders and whatever else. And if you click on the Maya here, you're going to see it comes all the way down, and, and all this stuff opens up to you. You've got all these different utility nodes. What I'm going to do is I want to use a ramp, and I'm going to right-click on this with it select over the top of it, mouse over it, right-click, and say Create as Projection. And you're going to see all of a sudden things are a little bit funky. Well, what it creates for me is this, and this is actually my projection. So I'm not using any UVs for this. I'm going to use this projection. The projection basically shoots an image directly onto whatever I had selected or whatever the material is applied to. In this case, it's going across her entire body, but I'm only worrying about her face. Because uh, again, I'm going to make new shaders for all of this to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to take this and kind of line this up so it's looking at her face the way I want, maybe something like so. And I'm actually going to shoot it from this side just a little bit so it matches kind of the light. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use these little arrows and I can travel up uh, into the image. If I go into here, here's my gradient. So I am going to go through and I get to hit 6 on the keyboard. I'm going to select this little uh, node down here, the little white on here. Click here and I'm going to go in I'm just going to sample the skin. And this is her skin tone that I sampled from right there. I'm going to come over to this side click on it, click on this, again click on that tier on the uh, eyedropper and let's just sample the highlight. So now I've got this gradient that goes across this. If I start to pull this in, what you're going to notice is that I start to get this kind of line. Now this is set up right now as a V ramp. If I set it as a U ramp, it goes up and down. So now I've got this gradient line that's cascading across my object and I can control the fall off of that here. And this is how I basically lit the face. I didn't use the light for this, um, but her main face was handled this way. And now if I want to angle this a little bit, I can just take the projection and I can rotate it, I can move it, and notice how now I can place that exactly where I want it. Um, which was really cool in terms of, or I thought it was really cool, to give me the effect that I was looking for really quickly. So I got a little bit under there right now. If I don't like that, I can always kind of rotate this just a little bit more. And I can start to also play with the uh, the angle this way. You can see what it's doing down here. It's, it's not at all what I would want. I'm only focused on this up here. Um, but if this is just a general example, so bear with me. So I'm gonna go back in again, just kind of click on these arrows, work my way back into this image. And if I wanted to, for, for whatever reason, click over here, it creates a new one of these. I can move it over and I could start to darken down the other side. Or in some cases, what I wanted to do was just take this, let's get rid of it, click over here, and maybe on this one, I wanna lighten it even more. So let's go into this, oops, let's click on it, and let's start to lighten that up. And you can see I could even make it brighter on that side if I wanted to, depending on the skin tone. Um, so that's basically it. So what I ended up doing was that for the face, to kind of break this up, and then I went through and created, like I said, another one for the arms down here and down here. Um, and there's different types of these uh, different types of these projections that you can play with. So for instance, if I was to take this torso, a planer may not be the best thing for this. Um, so what I'm going to do is just make a new material. Let's just say assign ma new material. We're going to make a Lambert and we're going to call this test. What I'm going to do is click on color. And again, I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to scroll till I find my ramp, right click as projection um, and this time maybe I try using something like a cylindrical or a spherical I ended up not using cylindrical 
um, but I en did end up using a spherical. And I can also say click to bounding box and that throws it on top of this piece of geometry. Now, what's nice about this is if I start to orientate, orient this, so I'm gonna start to find out where my seam falls. I'm kind of rotating this so it's in about the right orientation, kind of going up with the shape. And again, click on these arrows click here on image and we can go in and we can start to find out what's going on here by doing this. So again, I'm going to flip this to a U direction. I could also come in and use uh, circular ramps, which I use inside the ear. We talked about some of this. Use the exact same technique on one part of the ear using a circular ramp to darken in the center and then keep the outside the same color as the rest of the skin tone. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to start, start to uh, rotate this just a little bit like so. So now let's say that I wanted to kind of shade this area. What I'm gonna do is flip this around just a little bit. Let's go back to a, uh, I'm gonna go back to a U. I'm gonna undo because it was better off before. Ah, like this. All right, so I'm gonna do this. Let's just flip flop these sides. So now I have the dark on this side. So now all of a sudden it looks like I have some shadowing on this. Now this is hitting a really kind of harsh end over here. So what I might want to end up doing is taking some of this white, pulling it over to the side. But the goal is to try to hide these by having the same color. Um, and you can see if I have this all the way there, you can see it. But if I start to slide this over, now I've got a white and a white. When it wraps around, those are going to connect. Um, so essentially what I could do then is click here, get another one of these, start to pull this over just a little bit. And now I could have that shadowing kind of going around. Uh, but anyways, that's the that's how I kind of handled her torso to get this color right here. And I'll do the same thing I did before where I could come in and I can sample colors uh, right off of my image. And I'll do the same thing here, uh, just taking this. And in this case, I've already got it, so I'll just sample it from there. And you can see now it's going from this kind of lighter tone to a darker tone. Uh, and I could play with all of this. I could come over here. I can tighten this up by making another one of these and kind of moving it around. But that's the process. So I'm not gonna show you how exactly I did this for all of them, but it was a combination of making a lot of shaders with uh, different ramps for different body parts. Uh, and most of it was to accomplish, th accomplish things like these shadows. So on the arms, I could get the highlights from the uh, skin tone itself with the light. And I got the shadows by uh, using ramps across them. But that's how I approach shading things like her face and shadows. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It does take a little bit of time, but once you start doing these things, it gets faster and faster, and you can start duplicating shaders and kind of reusing bits and pieces. And that brings me back to uh, this right here, which is the kind of finished Freeman model uh, that I created. And again, it's a character from King's Aces that we kind of drew out and, and Jeff Harvey designed initially and then kind of tweaked it out just a little bit and just wanted to make it because I thought it was kind of cool. Um, so what's happening here then, I'm going to hide this backdrop. I just created a big plane to go behind it because I did the uh, turntable from this particular file. Even the shadow is just made up of bits and pieces. So I, I took a bunch of, uh, of circular planes, uh, basically cylinder tops, eight-sided cylinder tops, scaled them out, just smashed them all together, uh, and put a gradient across using a planar projection looking down to give them this little gradient uh, to basically have them be able to uh, kind of dissipate as it goes off and it kind of goes away. So looking at this, uh, I want to point out a few things. So every time you see the bottom of her leg get gray like this, what's happening there is a gradient. Um, so if I go into this, I'm going to show you how I can play with this. If I go in here, notice how I can play with how much or how little. Now I ended up using the same shader across the lower leg as well. Um, but if I come into the back here, Basically, all I'm doing is just kind of playing with some of these settings to kind of show you how you can change it. It's almost like interactive lighting, um, but it was way easier to get the effects that I wanted doing this than it was to try to add additional pieces of geometry were too harsh. It didn't match the look of the piece uh, of the original artwork, I should say. Uh, here, like I said, I split the boot and I split the leg just so I can keep this little highlight, but then the boot didn't get all this kind of gradient stuff happening on it. Um, if I was to show you, Again, all these different pieces. So for instance, all of this has one shader on it. This has a shader on it. Um, and I can even show you on these if I come in and if I was to click on the uh, material here and go through, I can adjust all this stuff. Um, so it's really nice and really flexible. So I can adjust that. Same thing on the bottom of her breast. This is a gradient. This is a gradient. All of this is gradient. The, even this has some level of gradient to it. This is shadow coming from the head. 
uh, you can see the finished face. What I did here was I wanted to pop the nose just a little bit. So I created, um, again, going back to Mike Altman's uh, kind of visit with us, I made a transparent piece that basically sits on the bottom of the nose. So I have the original nose piece here. I have a couple transparent pieces down below, um, which basically act as a bit of shadowing. Then I created a duplicate, which you can see right here, and I shaded it with a much brighter one, a, a much brighter shader that basically acts as like a highlight on her face. So if I look at this in shading with lighting turned on, you can see how it pops. So now it looks like she has, when I back off, she has this little pop of color on her nose, which I thought was kind of cool and kind of modeled that out just a little bit. Um, yeah, but it's pretty straightforward. When I spin around, you can see some of the details of the hair here because the light is catching it. What I liked was on this side, you can't see any of it. So it almost completely deadens out. Um, this belt buckle has a gradient on it. Again, a cylindrical going around. You can kind of see it right here. Because again, I wasn't getting any of the shadowing that I wanted from the actual light itself. Stuff like this is, and you can see it's a little bit pixelated, but who cares? You know, this is a quick little down and dirty render in OpenGL, so it's all fine and good. Um, you know, the chain, also I put a fong material on here just so I could get some of these highlights. And then uh, on the back, but they're not being affected by the light. So again, something else that you should be aware of is when I have a piece of geometry like this, if I go into its attributes in the attribute editor and go into render stats, um, I can turn off things like cast shadows, uh, receive shadows. Uh, you can play with all these different things. And some of my pieces of geometry are giving shadows, some are not getting shadows just playing with all the settings that are available to you. And just for fun, uh, I'll show you my hypershade. I wanna show you all of the uh, projections that I've got here. So let's just open up the hypershade. And here you can kind of see, this is how many shaders I have broken this thing up into. Uh, quite a few, again, individual parts sometimes had their own uh, stuff going on. So let me close this out and let's come back into this window get rid of the hypershade for a second. All right, so coming back in here, I'm also right now only showing you polygons and I have joints turned on for some reason, I'm not sure why. If I was to come in here and say all, everything that you see here is a projection. So all of those are the projections. What I recommend is if you're gonna do this is to try to go through and try to name them uh, because as you're tweaking things out, you're going to inevitably grab the wrong one and scoot it for instance and all of a sudden it's not gonna work out. But um, all that stuff's on here. If I was to ever move this and want to repose it, all this stuff would have to be parented to the individual pieces. Otherwise, it's going to swim and the textures are going to move across the geometry as it kind of flutters about. So um, it's best not to look at all that stuff. So right now I'm just going to limit it to the polygons. Um, but that's pretty much it. I think it turned out okay. When I look at it, there's still a ton of stuff, some of the pose, some of the everything else, but it was about as much time as I had to put into it. Um, but the process is awesome. I highly recommend it if you're into modeling. This is a great way to learn about shape and form and not worry about mesh flow and things like that up front. Um, so uh, yeah, if you wanna take on more of these, go ahead. Again, we've got the open competition that's open until May 16th, I believe. Feel free to throw down. If you have any questions or whatever, you can post in the, uh, in the chats, post in the video comments. But if you like what you're seeing here, go ahead and subscribe and hope to be doing some more of this in the future.